and welcome all of you who are here. Thank you so much for, for being here with us and taking the time to, to listen as to how PSJA is sustaining our program even in the midst of COVID. So one of the things that, as all of you know, we have to really take into consideration are the resources that we provide for our teachers. Um, so in looking at what kinds of resources our teachers would need during remote instruction, whether it be uh, whether it be face-to-face uh, -face instruction uh, or the blended, right, the, the, the hybrid, um, we really have to look at is that resource effective for all student populations and how is that resource is going to enhance a teacher and a principal's time instead of it being cumbersome as you know as Mr. Garza was, was mentioning earlier. Um, so a program like this, like Footsteps to Brilliance, is something that is really going to benefit our teachers and our principals as far as looking at reports and then making sure that they transfer that data into their, their, their learning, into their, their teaching. Um, one of the things about dual language uh, is that our state is tasking us with making sure that we are maintaining the instructional needs for our students, right? Making sure that we are providing that equity that our English learners need. And as, Ms., as Dr. Garza, Dr. Trevino mentioned earlier, um, we have been implementing this program, you know, since 1996. And it's, it's through ensuring that our teachers have the correct resources that we're able to ensure a strong foundation at the very beginning, right? At, at that, you know, pre-K K grade level that is able to allow us to sustain uh, that long-term learner uh, so that they can have uh, success when they reach middle school, when, when they reach high school. Because it's not just about looking at what do they need now you know, for, for the present, but how are we going to ensure that that is maintained as, as our children, as our students move up to middle school, to high school. So that foundation is, is crucial. Um, so in looking at making sure that our teachers are still developing you know, the English for our English learners, since that is the, their second language, and the Spanish for our English proficient students or our monolingual English students. Um, as Dr. Trevino mentioned, we do have two-way campuses and we are charged with ensuring that not only our English learners learn that, that second language, which is English for them, but that our English proficient students learn Spanish since that is their second language. So in looking at resources, we wanted to see which one combines this? Instead of having to buy one resource for the English development, another resource for the Spanish development. Because again, teachers want resources, but we can't you know, bombard them with, with too many because then it becomes overwhelming, right? So in, in looking at, at the, the flexibility that Footsteps to Brilliance uh, gave us, um, we're looking at synchronous learning <clears throat> and ensuring that our, our teachers have that time in, in their schedule to be able to, to implement an oral language development time uh, synchronously, right? And then once the students receive their, their lesson, they can continue to log on uh, to Footsteps to Brilliance asynchronously to continue and enhance and extend their learning as well. And so one of the things that we really enjoy about this program is the teacher training that is, um, that is <clears throat> provided for us. We have professional development where we, we gather our teachers after school for about an hour, hour and a half. And so the program uh, leadership um, looks at our data and they recommend a PD to go with, with what our, our data is, is saying. Recently, we just had a, a PD for our teachers uh, when it came to writing. So that, that was an amazing program so that our teachers are not only uh, looking at the oral language development, but we're also looking at you know, implementing writing um, along with, with that linguistic development. Um, we also have uh, monitoring uh, progress. As, as Mr. Garza uh, showed you all, the, the, some of the reports that, that this program comes with, it's very easy to, to look at progress or lack thereof, right? Um, and as he said, we go to the campus, we go to the teacher, and we can even drill down to the student to, and to look at what that student's needs are and then uh, assign work through Footsteps to Brilliance so that our, our children have the opportunity to also be those, those independent learners, right? And log on to, to the program and practice in, in the areas of, of need. And the other thing is, you know, because we, we see uh, the, the campus teachers, there's a friendly competition among teachers and among schools to make sure that, that you know, they're, they're improving their, their, their usage. 
Um, the other thing with this program is their versatility, right? We, we have access to the whole class. The, the teachers can, can use a small group instruction, individualized instruction. But one of the things that we also really enjoyed about this program is the parent support or the parent connection. Um, our students can log in from home. Um, they don't need Wi-Fi. They, they can use it on any device. So parents are able to support their children at home, um, again, asynchronously to ensure that, that they're learning. And one of the things that, that you're going to see in a little bit uh, when, when our teachers uh, present here is that the parents can toggle between English and Spanish. So if, if an English learner is reading a book, let's say in English, but the parent doesn't understand what, a, what you know, a, the, the meaning of a word in English, they can toggle to, to Spanish and get support like that and then vice versa. If we have an English proficient uh, student's parents who doesn't understand a word in Spanish, they can toggle to English so that they can continue to provide that support for their, for their child. So um, right now what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, Ms. Victoria Trigos and uh, she is going to talk to us uh, briefly about um, her experience with this program. And then we're going to show you a video so that you can see it in action as to how it is implemented in the, the classroom during synchronous learning. So Ms. Trigos. Hello everyone and welcome. And I'm glad to be here. My name is Victoria Trigos and I'm gonna give my introduction in Spanish. So we are promoting our dual language. So mi nombre es Victoria Trigos y soy maestra de lenguaje dual de kinder en la Escuela Primaria Santos Livas en nuestro distrito de Far San Juan Álamo. Y me alegra mucho tener la oportunidad de hablarles sobre este programa de Footsteps to Brilliance que usamos en, nuestro, en nuestra escuela. Este es un programa muy completo que en mi opinión este, eh, eh, este, cumple todos los aspectos que necesitan ahorita nuestros estudiantes. Me gusta mucho usarlo con mis estudiantes ya que trae muchos, muchos beneficios, muchos de los cuales ya mencionó Miss Martínez. Y uno de estos beneficios principales es que este programa fomenta el desarrollo del vocabulario de los estudiantes y sobre todo eh, sus habilidades de lenguaje oral y lo hace de una manera interactiva y divertida que los mantiene a los estudiantes emocionados y motivados a completar sus actividades. Eh, todo este contenido, el programa tiene todo este contenido en un formato interactivo, divertido y muy fácil de usar, tanto para los estudiantes como los padres que ahorita están apoyándolos desde casa. Incluye historias, rimas tradicionales, juegos y canciones. Um, otro de los beneficios que considero que es uno de mis favoritos y también lo mencionó Miss Martínez, es que este programa está disponible completamente en español y en inglés. Con solamente eh, presionar un botón, los padres y los estudiantes tienen acceso a todo el contenido en español y al contenido en inglés. Y es contenido auténtico, no son traducciones eh, literales, realmente es un contenido auténtico en español y auténtico en inglés. Esta es una herramienta muy poderosa para todos nuestros estudiantes y sobre todo nuestros padres que hemos re, me han reportado que están contentos con esta opción que tienen en este programa. Entonces, así como mencionó Miss Martínez, que no le entienden aún una palabra, entonces ahí se cambian de volada y es um, inmediato, inmediato, o sea, prácticamente de voladita. En resumen, este es un programa muy completo que uh, fomenta el aprendizaje de una manera divertida y fácil y puede ser utilizado perfectamente en lecciones guiadas por los maestros, así virtualmente, y también se presta para una, un uso independiente en el estudiante, ya sea en casa o cuando volvamos a clases, así que es un programa muy completo. Este, y pues esas son mis impresiones, estoy muy contenta de usar este programa, muchas gracias. Thank you for your attention, muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you, Ms. Rigos. And now I'm going to show you a, a short video of, of Ms. Rigos using this program with, with her, her students. And so um, I hope that we appreciate the tasks that our teachers have right, right now as we are um, in remote learning. So let's do this. I'm going to show you how, I, uh, how we present this program to our students during our live classes. I'm going to show and present one of my tabs. I'm going to share my screen. 
so I can tell you a little bit more about it. So this is how we present it. We state the objective together uh, by day. We, depending on the day, we introduce or review our vocabulary words. We read the story and we provide opportunities for them to participate, to use their language while we're reading the book. Sometimes we let them, at the beginning, day one, let's say we let them, the program read the, the story. In other days, we echo read or we read together, we take turns reading, and then we ask questions also about the book to reinforce their uh, listening and comprehension skills. We go over the program every day so they know how to access it. This is a Tuesday, we go over the same thing vocabulary, the book, we reinforce and reinforce. Each book comes with um, games that are geared to um, develop their language development, develop their language and their um, of, um, listening skills as well. So here's another one, another of the games. And this is the full week. As you can see, we review every day our vocabulary and we cover the book, maybe some sections. And also I want to mention that I like to assign to my students this other program that comes with Footsteps to Brilliance. I wanted my students to take advantage of this um, Clever Kids University because it, re it reinforces their listening and comprehension skills through um, many activities that uh, cover math, science, reading, and writing concepts. And there are short lessons. They like to do it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to show you a few clips of how, of how it looks in the classroom. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we can see the picture here. The animal shelter is open today. Your turn. The, the animal, animal shelter, shelter is open today. Good job. Continue. My turn. We go there to find a new pet. Your turn. We, we go there to find a new pet. So they go to find a new what, boys and girls? Pet. New pet. Thank you. Let's keep going. My turn. My mother and father and brother. Your turn. My, father, my, my mother and father and brother. And I. Your turn. And I. Good job. We'll pick out. The best one to get. The best one to get. And we can see over here they are very. How do you think they feel, boys and girls? Happy. Happy. What's another one? Happy. What's another one for that? Excited. 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 Good job. They're excited to get a new pet, right? Let's continue, boys and girls. My turn. It might be a kitten or maybe a cat. Your turn. It might be a kitten. It might be a cat. Good job. Continue. My turn. A horse or a donkey. Your turn. A horse or a donkey. It's really too big. Your turn. It's really too big. We don't have. We don't have. A barn at our house. We don't have a barn at our house. So what animals is this horse in Donkey. 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 Good job. And how about this one? Horse. And she said they were too what? Too big. Too big. Too big for their house. Has you done girl, miss? What did she, what did she say uh, they might need if they wanted those animals? What place? A barn. A barn, right? Miss. Miss, touch the girl. 
She will need to be taught. Oh, okay. We're gonna remember. You can go back to the story and click on all the pictures so you can see what they. Do. Okay. Alrighty, boys and girls. Uh, now I want to know what which one was your favorite animal? You, my favorite pet was the dog, and that's it. Tomorrow, you're going to tell me why and we can extend, okay? Right now, you're going to tell me which one was your favorite pet from the story, okay? I like, and then you tell me which one. Just one sentence, boys and girls, and we're done. So, Sophia, turn on your mic and tell me what pet you like. I like hamsters. You like hamsters. The, you like hamsters? Okay. Hamsters, hamsters eat a lot of healthy stuff have healthy beds and little homes and the so soft. That, that's true. Next week we're gonna have a project and you're gonna pick up pet boys and girls. Thank you, Sophia. I like cats. You like cats. Axel likes cats. Thank you, Axel. Stay, stay, stay. Daniela, your turn. I like I like bunny. Bunnies. Thank you, Daniela. Luna, your turn. I like cats and bunnies as well. Wow. Thank you, Luna. Okay. That was great. Thank you, Ms. Trigos. Um, up next, we're going to have Ms. Amparo Garza, who she's going to um, talk to us about how she uses Footsteps to Brilliance to develop the Spanish language proficiency for her uh, monolingual English students. So Ms. Amparo Garza, go ahead. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Amparo Garza, kindergarten teacher, Kelly Farr Elementary here in PSJA. I love to use this program personally because it has so many benefits as Olivia stated and Ms. Victoria stated. Uh, but one of them that is that I love is that it's very engaging and all the activities, including the books, the nursery rhymes, the songs, um, the games are all interactive and fun. And that's what I hear a lot of the parents telling me, but miss, he wants to keep playing at all hours. I'm like, well, just let them, <laughs> you know, and uh, students love to play the games and they don't even realize, but they're all academic. So it's, it's great. All of these promote their oral language their vocabulary development, uh, which is fantastic. And that's what we're trying to do right now. And uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about how I implemented uh, in my classroom daily. I first start, I introduce the vocabulary words for the book of the week. And then we listen to the book. They love listening to it. Once we listen to it, then I go ahead and I read it to them. And then they know that the next day we will read it together as uh, Victoria did, and we will do it in echo they will repeat after me. And um, what I also like about this program is that the fact that after we read the book, the kids can uh, go back and we play the games together and it helps verify the comprehension as well of the story, which is fantastic. Um, another thing about Footsteps to Brilliance that I like is that um, I noticed that it helps with their self-esteem and that's really critical right now especially since we don't have them in person and I am big on helping build their self-esteem and this program does an excellent job in doing so. It never makes them feel that they failed even if they got it incorrect. It's very, it comes across very positive and I like that about this program. Uh, so it's been a positive program that has been a great asset once again during this pandemic. It's been a great tool used to engage students um, through the use of technology, especially right now. So it couldn't have come at a better time for PSJ to implement this. Um, as Olivia, I believe, stated, and uh, Victoria, one of the most important benefits for me personally, and I can say is my favorite, is that it supports both languages and they can just toggle over and click from English to Spanish and back and forth. Um, so that's how I use the program. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Ms. Garza. Now I'm going to show you uh, Ms. Amparo Garza's video. Okay, so let's go to that. 
Buenos días, niños. Vamos a empezar. Footsteps to Brilliance. Y esta mañana quiero primero repasar el vocabulario con ustedes del libro de la semana, ¿ok? Que se llama Una mascota precisa. Este animal que ven aquí en la pantalla es un hurón, ¿ok? Esta es una rana. A ayer las vimos, las repasamos ayer. Este se llama cuervo. ¿Ven el gerbo? ¿Está pequeño o está grande? Pequeño. Es pequeño, ¿verdad? Vemos una cabra. Tal vez ustedes han visto una cabra antes. ¿Quién recuerda cómo se llama este? Victoria. Caballo. Un caballo. Un caballo. Gracias. Sí, un caballo. Este son... Ay, ¿quién reconoce este? Un gatito. Un gatito. Y este pequeñito es un... Ratón. Es un ratón. Marla, pon tu mute, Marla. Marla. Este es un ratón. ¿Y este quién conoce este? Un conejo. Un conejo. Alan, ¿qué es esta? ¿Una qué? Tortuga. Una tortuga. Y eso va a ser las palabras del vocabulario de la semana para Footsteps to Brilliance. ¿Ok? Ahora voy a empezar con mi libro de nuestra semana. Ahorita, siempre que entramos a Footsteps to Brilliance, acuérdense, se tarda un ratito para que arranque el motor y arranca y encontramos la montaña. Cambiamos a español. Vamos a leer esta semana el libro de la mascota precisa, ¿ok? Ahora vamos a empezar. Este, este día, ayer ya lo escuchamos, ¿verdad? Ayer yo se los leí. Hoy ustedes lo van a leer con Miss Garza. ¿Están listos? All right. En sí, echo. No ok, gracias. Vamos a leerlo en eco. Yo lo voy a leer y ustedes van a repetir. Listos. El refugio de animales está abierto hoy. El refugio, El refugio de animales está abierto hoy. Ahí vamos a encontrar una mascota nueva. Ahí vamos a encontrar una mascota nueva. Niños, déjenme hacerle una pregunta. ¿Qué es un refugio de animales? Un refugio de animales es una, una tienda de mascotas para que agarres una mascotita. Muy bien. Es donde tienen las mascotas que ustedes pueden, pueden comprar, digo, escoger una. Es un hogar temporal para los animales que no tienen un hogar donde vivir. ¿Y qué es lo que la familia quiere ir a, a, a encontrar? Una mascota. Una mascota. Gracias. Vamos a seguir. Mi madre, mi padre, mi hermano y yo. Mi, mi madre, mi madre y mi hermano y yo. Elegiremos a mejor mascota. Elegiremos a mejor mascota. Podría ser un gatito o un gato, tal vez. Un gatito, un gato, un gato, un gato, un gato. Podría ser un cachorro o un perro. Un hurón, un conejo o hasta una rata. Un hurón, un no una cabra, ni un pato, ni un sapo. No una cabra, ni un pato. Un caballo, un chupeadero, es demasiado grande. Un caballo, un chupeadero, es demasiado grande. No tenemos un estadio en la casa. No tenemos un Vemos muchas criaturas que nos parecen demasiado pequeñas. Un gerbo, una tortuga o un ratón. 
Ok, niños, ya hemos terminado de leer el libro de la mascota, ¿verdad? La familia fue a buscar una mascota para su hogar. Fueron a, la, a buscar la mascota, pero ellos cuando llegaron ahí se dieron cuenta, ¿verdad? Que habían muchas mascotas de diferentes tamaños. Y ahora es lo que yo quiero... Ahorita que ustedes me ayuden, vamos a hablar de uno del vocabulario, unas palabras del vocabulario de este libro, de este cuento, de una mascota precisa, ¿ok? Yo les voy a mostrar un animal, ustedes me van a decir si saben, si recuerdan, qué es del libro que acabamos de leer, ¿all right? Vamos a empezar con... Esta, ¿qué es esta? Si lo saben, es un animal. Es un animal. Es un No, 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 Oh, color café. ¿Y qué más? El caballo es fuerte. Fuerte. Perfecto. Un aplauso. Gracias. Muy bien. Entonces, alguien más me estaba contestando algo y les dije que esper esperaran. Ok, ahora, Cristian, tú estabas tratando de ayudarle. Te puedo decir a ti, ¿qué es este? You're on mute. Es el, You're muted. Es Conejo. No, en una oración completa, Cristian. Cristian. Cristian, ¿qué es? El conejo es blanco. El conejo es blanco. ¿Y qué tamaño es? El conejo es pequeño. Muy bien, un aplauso. Gracias. Muy bien. A ver, quiero que alguien que no me ha contestado, ¿dónde está no. Joana? Joana, ¿qué es? Uh, ¿Te recuerdas qué es esta? Ca la, la cabra es color café con blanco. Ah, ¿vieron cómo ella estaba leyendo la, la, la tarjeta? ¡Wow! Te escuché, Joana, muy bien. Y ella describió la cabra, es de color café con blanco. Muy bien. A ver, ¿quién sigue que no me ha contestado? Um, Alan, Alan, ¿tú me has contestado hoy? No, Alan, dime de esta, ¿qué es, por favor? Tortuga. No, en una oración completa, por favor. Tortuga. No, oración completa, por favor. Go. Una tortuga tiene una casa. ¿Cómo que una casa? ¿Qué tipo de casa? Una casa. Tiene una casa atrás porque, porque se esconde ahí en su seo y ese seo es una casa para ah, las tortugas. En su caparazón, muy bien. Dice él, gracias Alan, que tiene una casa y ahí es donde se esconde. Muy bien, entonces ya hemos terminado. Niños, les fue excelente. Okay. So, um, as you can see, these uh, two teachers, Ms. Victoria Trigos and Ms. Amparo Garza, um, they're doing an excellent job with uh, making sure that our, that our students are developing that oral language, but not just leaving it at that language. We are also making sure that they're comprehending what it is that that they're uh, learning about, reading about, okay? So with that, does anybody have any questions? 